Hello, my wonderful friends. How are you this morning or afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world today? Um, oh, I'm just, I'm looking, I'm looking at all the I am chats that we have going on right now. And it's always so exciting to see everybody checking in. And I'm, I'm curious. So let's do just real quick, let's do a little survey. So a survey is a noun, and it's just something that is used to collect information. And so you could do a survey on anything, really. And our survey, I would like to know, so I'm in Spokane, Washington, which is on the far western side of the United States, near Seattle. So I am curious, who is the farthest away from Seattle, Washington, of all of our viewers today. And then also, it is 7.30 in the morning, my time, so once more in Spokane, Washington. And I'm also curious who is up the latest or who is up the earliest. Okay, I don't know, I would, I would like to think, it would make my heart very happy to think that I have students that wait till midnight or one in the morning just to be a part of the Smart Live classes because really they are so great and I'm so glad to be back. Um, as you probably noticed, Miss Nicole uh, was teaching class the last couple of weeks. I was not feeling well, so I was able to take some time off and get better. And Miss Nicole, because she is so very, very wonderful, was uh, teaching class for the last couple of weeks. So big thank you to her. I will buy her coffee to show my appreciation. And with that, I'm very excited to be back. But you will have to excuse me from time to time as I'm still um, kind of dealing with a sore throat and will need my coffee. But with that, I'm gonna look over at the chat and see um, with our survey, who is the farthest away from where I am near Seattle, and who is up the earliest or the latest. So Brazil, 1.30, mm-hmm. Mm. Verda in Indonesia. So yeah, it's almost midnight where you're at. You're almost to the next day. We have someone from North Carolina. That's wonderful. I actually visited South Carolina. So your, your uh, sister or brother state last year. It's beautiful down there. So greetings in North Carolina. New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. You know what? You say I'm, I'm the latest, but really, you're the earliest because you're already tomorrow. Today is January 17th here, but you're already January 18th. You're in the future. Welcome, New Zealand. Dominican Republic, California. All right, Brenda, you and I were on the same, same time zone, so glad to have you. Hope you're having a wonderful morning as I am. Okay, a few more. Bolivia, Korea. Excellent. All right, well, we will go ahead and get started with today's lesson. Um, once more, if you have not been here the last couple of weeks, Miss Nicole was taking over the Smart Life class while I was out not feeling well. Um, with that, my name is Miss Abby, and I will from here on be the regular teacher for our Smart Live classes, okay? Um, if this is your first time joining us, from time to time, I do take a pause, just take a break, look over in the chat session, the chat room. So if you have any questions, please feel free to post them there, and I will certainly, certainly try my best to get to those. Um, also, any comments that you guys might have as well. So with that, we will go ahead and get started. Oh, Italy! Rosa in Italy, what part of Italy are you in? I, I uh, two summers spent 
collectively. So that means one summer and the other summer, both time, if I put all the time together, collectively, uh, I've spent about two months in Italy and I love it. Absolutely love Italy, Rosa. So what, what part of Italy are you in? Would love to know. Ali, hello Ali from Saudi Arabia. Praveen, you're from Earth. It's a good place. It's a good place to be. I'm glad. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Oh, and then we have someone else who is a time traveler. So, yeah, all kinds. And as I always say, teaching English and in particular, the technology that we have available to us today to do live classes such as this is just tremendous. So tremendous means huge, exciting. It's an adjective. Um, awesome, if you remember from our vocabulary, which we will review shortly real quick and just finish up. So it's always just tremendous and tremendously awesome even um, to me, the fact that I can be sitting here in Spokane, Washington, a beautiful city that I love, and talking to my friends from all over the world. It's just technology in some ways makes the world a lot bigger, but in some other truly amazing ways, it makes the world smaller. And with that, um, glad to have you guys all here as friends. Oh, and Rosa, North Italy, near Milan. Um, I spent several days in Lake Como and I want to live there. So um, if you ever want to adopt me, um, I will be a very good daughter. I promise to clean my room or sister, uh, cousin. I, I, I promise to keep my room clean. I'm a really good cook. I won't be noisy. I'll just live under the stairs because I would love to live in Italy and especially up by um, Milan and Lake Como. So very happy that you are joining us. Steve, Steve Lynn, tremendously awesome. I like this. Good. Okay. Wonderful. Well, let it continue on now. All right. We are making magic. Huh. It's a little, I'm a little hot right now, but the fact that I'm wearing a jacket um, will, will make sense. And just one little bit as we are once more continuing on and hopefully finishing our vocabulary in unit five. Um, I think in a lot of ways, and I've had a lot of students say that they, they agree and hopefully they agree because they truly do agree and not just because, yes, whatever teacher says, we agree with. I've had students agree, and I think that vocabulary is absolutely one of the biggest and most important parts of truly learning English and truly comprehending, so understanding a language, whether it be English, any language, vocabulary. Because vocabulary, the more words you know, the more you're able to say. It's kind of like building a house. Um, if you eat dinner and it is Italian food that I love, it's one of the most amazing, awesome, incredible dinners you have ever eaten. For the rest of your life, you will remember this fantastic meal. If you only have a little vocabulary, you can say dinner was good. And that would be correct, and that would be perfectly fine. But as we expand, so as our vocabulary gets bigger, that allows us to say more, okay? That enables us, enables us to say more and tell more of what we're feeling or what we're thinking, so that instead of just saying, dinner was good, okay? Well, sunshine is good, and sales, which we'll look at in our vocabulary, are good. But as we build our vocabulary, we can say, dinner was awesome, which we know is good, 
mm, plus a whole bunch more. So with that vocabulary, um, as I have stated before, is probably uh, one of my favorite things to teach in English. So give you a moment, I'm gonna look over at our chat. Kathmandu, Kathmandu, Nepal, and it's freezing cold. I bet it is. Um, last week here in Spokane, it got down to, I believe, negative 10 below zero. So that's um, a little bit more than 40 degrees below freezing. But yeah, Kathmandu, Nepal, I bet you are chilly. You will need a jacket, which once more in a few minutes, it'll make sense why I, I am currently wearing a jacket, even though I'm inside in our wonderful studio. All right. <laughs> Thank you. It says, I like the way you're twisting your mouth. What my hope is in twisting my mouth is I really try to enunciate. So enunciate, we know, just means to speak very clear. Um, with that, enunciation is helped when you really overemphasize and really say the words, making the shape of the words with your mouth. It's easier to understand. Um, so so tw I'll, I'll take twisting, twisting my mouth, trying to enunciate and hopefully that'll make it a little bit more clear and I'm glad you noticed and I'm glad you like it. So, all right, my friends, going on to vocabulary and this is unit five. First little bit, as we know, we'll just be review and then we'll finish up and if we have time, we'll go into some discussions. So I'm just gonna go through these words really quickly, okay? Because once more, they should be review and hopefully these are already words that you are putting into your discussions, that you're using in your speech, writing, whatever capacity, so whatever way um, you are learning English. Had a little snafu with technology. There we go. Technology, computers are not always my friend. I've said before, I'm old. There's still a lot that I need to learn, but we're here and we're going. <laughs> First word, appointment. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. An appointment is a noun, it's just a set time and place. So every Tuesday morning at 7.30, I have an appointment to teach smart English to my friends all over the world. Awesome. The view from here is awesome. Again, I could certainly say the view from here is good, but awesome means more. It's a stronger word. What I mean by that is that it's good plus a whole lot. It's good, 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 great, grand, awesome. It's better than just good. So the view here, this young lady is overlooking the ruins of Machu Picchu in Peru, and the view is awesome. Bandage. I need to put a bandage on my cut. Once more, I we would say accident prone. So accident is when you mess up, or maybe you're sharpening your pencil and you accidentally hit yourself with a pencil or do silly things. Accident prone. Prone means often happens to you. I end up using a lot of bandages. Bandage is a noun. As you can see with the picture, it's just a little bit of fabric with sticky on either side that you put over your cut. So once more, you would not put that over a bruise, just if you had been hit and, you know, when you get hit, if it's very hard, you, your skin will turn a little bit purple as the blood comes to heal that. You would not put a bandage on that. 
you would only put a bandage on a cut or where you're actually bleeding. So bandage, noun, blanket. Here's my blanket. This is a beautiful blanket that my grandma made and I keep it in my classroom in case any of my students are ever cold or they just want something cozy. Anybody remember cozy? Where's Rosa? I don't know if Rosa's on today, but uh, Rosa picked up on uh, the word cozy that I introduced when we were first starting our smart lessons. Cozy just means warm, comfortable, you feel good. This little girl is definitely feeling cozy in her blanket. So once more, um, I keep a couple blankets in my classroom if my students ever get cold or they just want to feel cozy. And I will write in cozy in the chat box so you know the spelling and the word itself. Okay, going on. Boot. It's raining. You should wear boots and not shoes. And again, boot is the singular, okay? It's a noun. Let me see how flexible I am. Mm -mm. There. <laughs> I'm wearing boots today <laughs> because there's a lot of snow on the ground here in Spokane and it really is beautiful. But boots, our vocabulary word is boot, singular, but as they are a type of footwear, you probably want to, probably want boots. All right. All right, bowl. I always have a bowl of cereal for breakfast. So a bowl is different than a cup in that a bowl is what you would eat soup out of, um, anything that's liquid, but you could also put uh, spaghetti, okay, rice, I'm thinking of all the things from around the world, all the wonderful delicacies. So delicacies is just food, but certain special food from different places. So a bowl, if it's helpful, you can just think of it as a large cup. So bowl is a noun. Brand, my favorite shoe brand is Converse. So a brand is just that specific company, right? So Nike is a brand, Reebok, Adidas, Calvin Klein, Valentino, Versace, uh, even with phones or electronics, um, cars, hey, Mercedes, BMW, Ford, Samsung, Apple. A brand is just the name of that company, all right? I'm going to take a quick second and look over at our comment box. Do, do I keep all the materials with me? No, I just ran around school in, in my classroom real quick before we, uh, before we signed on to see if I could find any props. Nike, good. Oh, good question. American guys, do they wear Ugg boots? American girls do. Um, Ugg boots are, are usually something that a woman w would wear. Not, not many gentlemen, not many men I think I've ever seen wear Uggs. It's usually women. All right. Bucket. I need a bucket to wash my car. So as you can see here is bucket. A bucket and pail, okay? As was asked last time, a bucket or a pail in a lot of ways could be synonymous. Um, just remember that a bucket, it's usually gonna be a little bit larger and it's almost always, or will always, have a handle. So you can actually carry a bucket, all right? Um, I grew up on a small farm and so we always had horses and cows and sheep and goats. And so it was my job as a child to fill the bucket with grain, so their food, 
and take the bucket of oats out and feed the animals because we know that animals eat out of a bucket, not out of a bowl. All right, cashier. Cashier is a noun, it's a person, and it is just the person that rings up, so we would say rings up, or tallies, totals up your purchase, whether that is at a deli, a restaurant, a store. So example here, Jane works as a supermarket cashier part-time. Cause, all right. And I wanna make a distinction because before, I um, can't remember if it was Anthony, but someone had a really great question. They said, wait, cause, I thought that was short for because. Okay, I'm gonna type this down over in the chat box. So because, when we shorten that in slang, then it's just cause. Okay, this is cause, cause, as in the cause of the fire. This happened, so this happened, right? It's different than cause, like because, if I was speaking in slang. So if I said, um, I'm not gonna go out to dinner tonight because I promised my friend I would come over. If I was speaking informally, you'd say, I'm not gonna go out to dinner tonight because I promised my friend I'd come over. That is different than cause, right? With this, cause is a noun, and again, it implies cause. One thing happened, and it caused, okay, the effect, right? So, the cause, the cause for me buying a new pair of boots is because it's very cold and there's a lot of snow in Spokane, right? So that caused me, that caused me to need to go shopping to buy some boots. Oh no. <laughs> Sudeep, Sudeep brought up, what about cuz? C-U-Z. Now we're really, really going slang because that is very slang for cousin. And cousin, now shortened to cuz, is a very informal, very informal, friendly greeting in American slang. So yeah, we have cause, as in cause and effect, this happened, so this happened. Cuz, short for because, and now cuz very informal uh, greeting for a friend, short, of course, for a cousin. <laughs> yes, where is Rosa? We need some discipline here. I can't, I can't do it all. I love looking at your, your IM messages. All right, clerk. Clerk is similar in a lot of ways to cashier, but if we look back at ca cashier, the first four letters make up their own word, cash. So cash, we know, is just money. So a cashier is someone that deals with money that you pay your money to to get something. Now, it's very similar, of course, to clerk because a clerk is someone that works within the store. The cashier works within the store at the front where you purchase or you buy your items, if you cannot find your items, you would ask a clerk. So that of course is a person, so a noun. Clothes, hopefully we know what clothes are. Clothes are just what we put on our body and judging from all the wonderful students we have from all over the world, everyone is wearing very different clothes. People in Brazil where it's nice and warm are probably gonna be wearing less clothes than our friends in Nepal. But we know the clothes, just the articles we put on our body. All right, clothing. So that would be the plural. 
Some people have a lot of clothing. They have huge closets. My friend loves to go shopping. She has a lot of clothing. All right. Vivek, I don't have any cash to buy a gift for you, Abby. Vivek, that is perfectly fine. My gift is that you're here joining us in class. So thank you so much for that. All right, clue. If you don't know the answer, I'll give you a clue. So a clue is like a hint, right? You're not directly telling someone the answer. You're giving them a hint. You're giving them a little bit of information, okay? You're giving them a clue. So if there has been uh, a crime has been committed and the police or authorities are not sure who is responsible, okay? As we see in this picture, they'll look for clues. They'll look for hints, little bits of information that will give them more information that will serve as clues or serve as a clue to help them uh, figure out the problem. All right. All right, comfortable. The bed in my hotel room isn't very comfortable. Hmm. Maybe switch hotels or get a nice blanket because blankets will help keep you comfortable. Comfortable just means relaxed, nice, okay? This jacket, okay, coming up, coming up. Wonder why is she wearing a jacket indoors? See, this jacket that I'm wearing is very comfortable. It's nice. This poor fellow, his, uh, his hotel room bed was very uncomfortable. All right, comic book. So we went over before, comic book, technically, I guess, yes, is a book. Um, the difference is that comic books tell the story or give the information largely, so almost exclusively, through pictures, right? So like Marvel Comics, um, DC Comics, so Superman, Spider-Man, all the men, Wonder Woman. Um, I didn't see the movie, although I want to. Suicide Squad, which was a blockbuster, so huge hit movie that came out this year, was all based on comic books. So once more, comic book is a noun, but it is a book that tells pictures, or excuse me, tells the story in pictures with very little writing. All right. Real quick, I'm gonna check over in the chat box. All right. Wonderful. Perfect. Going on. Complain. If you're not happy about the service, you should complain. So to complain, it's a verb. It just means to say or express what you are unhappy about or what you are displeased with. So if I went and got some coffee and maybe I said, no sugar, I, I do not want any sugar in my coffee, and they put sugar in my coffee, even though I personally, I don't like to complain, I think that there's nice ways to go about fixing problems, but you can complain nicely or politely so if I ordered coffee and they got it wrong, I might go back and kindly complain. Say, I'm sorry, but I got the wrong coffee. Could you, could you please fix it? So to complain, once more, is a verb, and it's just to state or say what you are unhappy or what you are displeased with. So hopefully, I won't, I won't look over at the chat box right now, but hopefully no one has any complaints uh, about Miss Abby and my smart English class. But if you do, just be kind um, and I will do my best to teach my best for you guys because as always, you as the students are the most important part of class. So, but hopefully, hopefully I won't ever give you reason to complain. 
Good one. I just came back to complain because you put too much sugar in my coffee. Yep. Good. Great job, guys. These look wonderful. Okay, great, moving on. Convenient, convenient. Smart English, learning live online is very convenient. Convenient just means it's easy, it's nice. You don't have to put much effort or as much effort into it. What I mean by that is you can be sitting in your pajamas, okay? You could be sitting wrapped up in a beach towel in Brazil on one of your beautiful beaches with your laptop. My goodness, even just your phone and be watching smart live English. And it's so convenient, okay? So this would be an adjective describing something, describing something that's very easy, um, that's, if something is convenient, it means it's nice, you don't have to work hard. So hopefully you find that smart English learning online is very convenient. Cost. So cost is just whatever amount of money or amount of something you have to give in order to get something else, okay? So a lot of times we'll hear about the cost of living so it costs a lot to live near the water in this city. And that would be true in most cities. A lot of people want to live by the water, which means a lot of people are willing to pay more to live by the water, which makes the cost of, okay, looks like there's some apartments, some condominiums, some houses. They probably cost quite a bit because a lot of people want to live by the water. Cost is just whatever something is worth, okay? Whether, again, it be an apartment, um, a jacket, a blanket, boots, okay? And when you buy something, you look at the cost. If you say, yep, I would like it, then you take it to the cashier. Good, I love all these comments, guys. Keep them coming. All right, department store. Department store is a noun. If we break it up, department and then store, okay? So the Apple store, or my phone is uh, Verizon. If I go to the Verizon store or the Apple store, I can only buy Verizon or Apple products. That's all they sell. Now within there, there will be, you know, I could buy different phone cases or I could buy different headphones, but everything in the Verizon store, phone store, or in the Apple store is going to be that brand. Remember, going back, that brand. Now, when we look at department store, a department is a specific location that sells specific things. So you've probably heard or been in a oh, Walmart, that's a department store because I could buy food there, I could buy clothing there, I could buy boots there, I could buy bowls there, I could buy blankets there, I could buy almost anything at Walmart, okay? Because there's many different departments. So department store, store is the noun, Department would be the adjective, but together, when it's just one department store, it is a noun. All right, gonna check and see if we have any questions. All right. Hmm. So good question. What is the difference between clothes and clothing? So clothes and clothing in a lot of ways can be used interchangeably. She has a lot of clothes. She has a lot of clothing. I'm going to go on a two week vacation. How many clothes should I bring? How much clothing should I bring? So depending, they oftentimes can be synonymous 
and or used interchangeably? Very good question. It just means plural of clothes or of cloth. All right, desk. You can't see it, but I'm sitting at a desk. Probably a lot of you are as well. Most people have their computer or their laptop, wherever they work or study, set up on their desk. Electronics, like Verizon phones, like headphones, like laptops, computers. Electronics, anything that's electrical. Okay, and this of course would be a noun. I have a pretty good idea that uh, most of you guys understand what the word electronics means because electronics are such an integral. There's a huge, there's a big word for you. Integral meaning very important part of our life today. So electronics. Fear. Fear, being afraid, okay? The child loves to do dangerous and scary things. He doesn't have any fear, all right? S different people have different degrees and different reasons for fear. Um, as I have traveled the world, I have noticed two main fears that seem to be the same in all countries and all cultures, and they are largely spiders. I don't like spiders. Or snakes. I love snakes. I think they're beautiful. I won't say they're cute, but some of them are pretty awesome. It seems to be globally accepted that fear, people's biggest fear, it's usually spiders or snakes. What are you guys afraid of? What brings you fear? Uh, I know as a child, uh, I had a fear of the dark. Now I don't, most of the time. Oh my gosh, Akram, fear. And here, if you can see in the chat, he broke down fear into a um, false evidence appears real, right? Well done. Yes, I've I've heard that I've heard that before. That if you break down fear, it can just stand for false evidence appears real. Although I will say that I killed uh, when I was in Cyprus, which is a Middle Eastern island, and they have asp snakes or vipers that if you get bit um you you die within 45 minutes that is not false evidence that is very very real and i had good reason to have fear uh, of that snake <laughs> but really good akram really good yes a lot of people are afraid of heights a lot of people are water <laughs> french leo says um I'm, I'm afraid, or I have fear from my, my ex-girlfriend. Eh. Um, why do you have fear of a ghost, or do you have fear of a ghost? Oh, Aaron Drung. Yep. I'm afraid of standing up in front of many people. That is a very, very common fear as well. Public speaking, talking in front of people, especially large groups. Being a teacher, that's not a fear of mine. And you'll probably find, I bet a lot of you would agree, that a lot of times you can work, most times it takes a lot of work, but you can work to overcome, so that means to get over or to rid yourself of fear. All right, feature. There are many features of the new phone that I like. So, with my phone, some of the features. I can take pictures. Selfies. I don't take selfies. I'm too old to take selfies. Don't worry. I don't do such No selfies, but I can take pictures So one of the features on my phone I can take pictures. I can take a video um, I can use it as a map You guys know with electronics um, There's always so many different features a phone When I was growing up you could do one thing you could call 
and the phone was hooked to the wall, usually in the kitchen, and you could talk to people on it, and that was it. Now, 20 years later, there are so many features with phones. Forgetful. Well, some of the features on your phone can help you if you are forgetful. Forgetful would be an adjective, and it just means you forget. You do not remember things. So, one of the features on my phone is that I can set it for when I have an appointment. Okay, so remember our very first word is to set time and place. I can set the feature on my phone that will remind me when I have an appointment because sometimes life gets busy and you get forgetful, All right? Again, an adjective it just means that you don't remember things. You forget. It's easy to do. It's easy to ha have happen, all right? Uh, Vivek, which phone do you use, Abby? This is a... Um, uh, Verizon Samsung and it's gray and I put this thing on the back because I thought it was pretty. Hope that answers your question Mr. Vivek. Okay here we go jacket and the reason the reason why I'm sweating. So giving visuals I wanted to give you guys a visual that this this is a jacket. Okay, so a jacket is different. And I asked Mr. Neal, if you guys watch some of the other smart classes, Mr. Neal is one of the other fantastic teachers. A jacket is different than a coat. And I'm not gonna take the time to put it on, but the difference between a jacket and a coat is that a jacket is more lightweight, okay? Whereas a coat is heavier, it will keep you, it will keep you warmer. So our friend in Kathmandu, Nepal, yeah, you're, you're probably wearing a coat and not just a jacket, all right? So again, a jacket is what I was wearing. It's lighter weight. A coat is just a step up where it'll really keep you warm, okay? I hope bringing in visuals or having visuals is helpful for you guys. It's, it's fun for me to look around and try to figure out what I can bring into the lesson. All right. Jar, okay? So a jar, this is the perfect illustration what you can see in the picture there is just canning jars, okay? So a jar, they're usually glass and they almost always they have a lid that you can put, put on or take off, okay? So you can store things, most, most oftentimes food in a jar. Okay. Oh, all right, so I have a... Um, Couple questions here. Miss Abby, can we say it is too hot or too much hot today? Okay, so what we could say is we could say it's too hot today. We could also, if we really wanted to emphasize it, we could say it is much too hot today. Both are the same meaning, just meaning it's hotter, it's warmer than you would like. Great question. If, hopefully that answered it. If it didn't, um, type below and let me let me know if you need more clarification. If you need it made more clear. Another one. Hmm. All right. I think you should um, use forgetful in your sentence because of its weird meaning. Great. So a sentence I would use: I have an appointment next week and I am very forgetful. So one of the features on my phone reminds me of my appointment because I am forgetful. Okay. Hopefully that was, that was helpful.
All right. Low, 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 low. This is used as an adjective. And our example, the prices, so price, what something cost, they're low, okay? Opposite of high, they're low in this store. So for a sale, which as we continue on will be another vocabulary word, when there is a sale, they reduce, so they bring prices down, they lower the prices, okay? If you're going shopping, you will find low prices. So the opposite of high prices or expensive. Order, and with this it means order food at a restaurant. Our order has taken a very long time. So with this, order can be both a noun or a verb. In this example, it's a noun. An order is what these people at the restaurant have said that they would like, what they would like to eat, what coffee they want. That is their order. You look at the menu, you see the different choices, you decide what you would like, and then you make your order. So in that case, order is used as a noun. Now to make an order, okay, or to order someone, that would be a verb. So as a teacher, I can order my students, please put away your phones. Okay, so I'm giving them an order. Really, I have amazing students and I, don't like to order anyone around. So I, I can usually just say, please put your phone away. But if needed, I could make an order, okay? Or I could order someone to do something, put their phone away, put their laptop away. This, this example, order is used once more as a noun. So these people have placed their order, they've told the waiter or waitress what they would like, and now they're just waiting. And it says that their order has taken a very long time, so they might make a complaint. All right. Oh, Aaron Jones had a very good question. Can I say the prices are medium at this store? Yeah, you absolutely could, you absolutely could. If I said, oh, I have not been to that department store, how are the prices? You could say, they're medium priced, they're not too high, it's not too expensive, um, it's not low, you know, there's not always a lot of sales, it's not low prices, it's medium priced, the store's medium priced. Absolutely, Aaron, great question, and yes, you could say that. All right. Painting. So once more, this is one of our words that can be both a noun or a verb. So painting as in actually putting paint up on the walls, okay, painting the walls. Or if I'm an artist or pretending to be an artist, you know, I could paint if I had a paint brush. With this, we have it as a noun, as a thing. And if you look over in, let's see, I think it'd be the left corner of your screen, unless it's switched around, um, you can see the painting of a tree. So let's put that painting on the wall in the living room. All right, so painting here as a noun. Picky, picky. This is an adjective, and here's our example. It's difficult to buy clothes for her because she is so picky. I have the adjective, picky. To be picky means to be very particular. All right, you like certain things or you will only accept certain things. Now, I think that everyone in some way is picky or not. Maybe some people absolutely hate seafood. They do not like to eat fish. They will not eat fish. Maybe other people 
really dislike wearing the color purple. Okay, they're very picky with what they what color clothes they wear. I think everyone has different ways that they're picky. Um, sometimes if someone is really, really picky, maybe those are the type of people that are always making complaints because if you're picky, you want something a certain way, right? And that, of course, once more is an adjective. Look over at our chat. So yes, Rosa, again, is painting a verb too? Absolutely. So painting, I'm painting a picture, okay? Or um, I'm going to redo, okay? So make, make my bedroom look different. I'm going to redo my bedroom and I'm going to paint the walls green. So absolutely, that would be, that would be painting as a verb. Painting as a noun is what we saw in the last slide. Okay, so this, this painting up on the wall. Great question. All right, peace. <sighs> So as I was saying before, um, I find it helpful, hopefully you guys find it helpful as well when I bring in um, different props to actually show you. I really wish that uh, I had this to bring in as a prop to show you because I am not a picky eater. I like almost all kinds of food or I will at least try all kinds of food. And this piece of cake on the screen, I haven't eaten breakfast yet, but that looks like it would really taste good with coffee. I would not complain if I had this piece, this beautiful, awesome looking piece of cake. So piece, all right, is just a small part. So we could even say like, I only got a piece of the story, but I think just the small piece of the story that I heard gives me enough clue to what happened. So going back to one of our beginning vocabulary words, clue, if you just get a piece, so a little bit of a story, just a piece, so like this, this is not the whole cake, it's just a little bit, it's a piece. With that, I could also once more say, I got a piece of the story. So I don't know the whole story, but I got a piece of the story. And with that, now I have a clue, right? So clues can also, in some ways, especially if we're thinking about law enforcement or detectives, little pieces of information can serve as clues because piece just means a small bit. All right, so in this case, with this really beautiful example, this is just a piece of some very awesome looking cake. All right, perfect, Leo, a piece of the puzzle. Yes, we know that a puzzle is a picture that's then cut up into all different pieces, but all the pieces lock together, okay, so that you can put the puzzle together. With that, you take the pieces of the puzzle and you put them all together. Absolutely, great example. Would you like a piece of pizza? Yes. Mmm, Amit, really good catch. This is one of the crazy ways the English is so tricky. So piece, P-I-E-C-E, is a noun, a piece of the pie, a piece of puzzle. The example you used, piece of mind, that is piece as in P-E-A-C-E. -E. So yes, I apologized many times before and I know as long as I teach, I will continue apologizing for the English language because so many of our words sound exactly the same or sound almost exactly the same, but they mean totally different things. So you are completely right in that peace, peace of mind, 
but it's peace with P-E-A-C-E. -E. So that means like peace, this is the international peace sign, okay? That just means no violence, no war, no fighting. So to say peace of mind just means your mind is calm, your mind's not fighting, okay? Your mind is calm, you have peace in your mind. Okay. Really good, really good. Oh no, Akram, now he brought up peas, P-A, or P-E-A-S. So peas, though, those are the vegetable. So we have peace, peace, and then I could have a bowl of peas. You guys are great, you're fantastic. Great job. All right, power. So power we can use a couple of different ways. In this example, and especially uh, since electronics was one of our vocabulary words, we'll be talking about power um, as in like my phone, when my phone loses power, when the battery is drained or dead, I can't use it. I have to go power it back up. I have to go recharge it. So power, okay, the lights that we have here around the studio, obviously I have to plug them into a power source. I have to plug them into an outlet, right? Just so you know, we would also say power as in like might or force, okay? So as a teacher, Teacher, the teacher in the classroom has the power to say, now we take a test, please put your laptops away. A student, students shouldn't, they can, but they shouldn't say, no, no, I'm not going to put my laptop away or my, my phone away. The teacher has the power, okay? They are the authority to say, we're taking a test, taking a quiz, please put your phones away. Going back to our example here, power um, as within technology, as in with electronics um, and plugging in your electronics or your computer or your laptop into an outlet or that power source. All right. Okay, good. These are my, don't waste the power. Yep, it's true. Can we say my laptop is dead, like my phone is dead? Absolutely, absolutely. Great question, Akram. Yes, if we say um, my laptop is dead or my computer is dead or my phone is dead, it just means it has stopped working, okay? Maybe the battery needs to be recharged, it needs more power, maybe you dropped it, like I drop my phones a lot and then they die, they are dead, but like truly dead, and I have to go get a new one. But you are absolutely right in that question that yes, you can say my laptop, like my cell phone, is dead. Mm -hmm. You could say my car's dead, right? A lot of times in the winter when it gets really cold over here in Spokane, sometimes um, the batteries in the car might be affected by the cold weather, and then the battery is dead which causes the car to be dead. Good question. All right, another question, getting low or running low? Um, the first, when I first hear that, I automatically think of gas or petrol, what goes into your car, as long as your car's not dead. And you could see, say either. You could say, I'm getting low on gas. Or, or petrol, or I'm, I'm running low, okay? We have enough right now, we're still going, but the longer we drive, the more gas you use, you're gonna get lower and lower. So yes, you absolutely could say getting low or running low. Good question. Or you could say I'm getting low on coffee, I'm running low on coffee, help. All right, I'm gonna go over time, just a couple couple extra minutes. I hope that's okay, I assume it is. Price, so price is just 
how much something cost. All right, so my coffee cup price, $2, right? So that, of course, is a noun. It's just how much something cost, price. Receive. We didn't receive very good service at that restaurant. Okay, so maybe they put in their order and their order took a long time. So now they're going to complain because they didn't receive very good service. So receive just means to get. It's neither good nor bad. You can receive presents. You can receive praise. So someone saying, well done, good job. Okay, it just means to get, to receive. So Aaron, oh Aaron says my laptop doesn't have any doesn't have any battery. So we would say any battery left. So yeah, your laptop is dead. All right, remind. This is a verb. This is an action. Okay, to remind. If someone is forgetful, if they forget things, it's nice to have an awesome feature on your phone that will remind you when you have an appointment. Okay, it'll come up, you know, droop, give me a little ring, and it reminds me, it tells me, it helps bring to memory, bring back to my mind, okay, so that I'm not forgetful, so that I don't forget. So remind, could you please remind me about the meeting later? I'm sure I'll forget. I'm very forgetful. All right, let's do one more word. Room. Room, and with this we just mean space, okay? We need to move because our apartment doesn't have enough room for all three of us. So room, it's just the amount of space, okay? Now room also has a noun, certain rooms. Okay, and usually we give them a qualifier. Bedroom, the room, the space that you have your bed. Living room, okay, that's usually a communal, so the community place within a house. In America, we say bathroom, where you have the toilet and the shower or the bathtub. Okay, so room, it's a noun, or as we have here, room as in space. We need more room. There's not enough room, okay? I have a very small house. My house is very, very old. And when I was sick, my, my wonderful mother, this is another universal truth, okay? So universal truth means it's true no matter where you are. When you are sick, it is very nice to have your mother with you. So I was not feeling well, and my mother came over and, and stayed with me. But because of that, my house is very old and it's very little, and we realized that there's not enough room for two people. With both of us there, it got very cozy, okay? So we will go ahead and end on room. Um, next week, my apologies, I just get once more, so excited and I love vocabulary. We have just a few more vocabulary words to go through and then we will actually be using these vocabulary words once more. That's why we need to get through these because our next practice, our discussion, we are going to be putting all of these words into practice. So before I check out, I'm gonna check one more time over at the comment box there's anything you need. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Well, as always, I hope you guys um, enjoyed this Smart Live class. Remember, if you are not a subscriber, it's very, very easy to become a subscriber. And with that, 
that uh, enables you to take tests, to take quizzes, to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with me or other teachers so that you're not just seeing um, the live classes, but that you really have that full interaction and that full range of avail availability from the smart teachers. Um, Again, as a reminder, classes are going down to just once a week. So all you wonderful people that are either up very early or up very late, staying up very late uh, to see the live classes, now they're just down to once a week. Um, so for one hour, we'll get lots and lots of information, work together um, to help continue to acquire that that English acquisition, all right? As always, if there's anything else that I can do, I'm here for you. As a teacher, my only purpose is my students. You guys are the students and you are awesome. So thank you so very much for joining me. I'm Miss Abby and this is Smart Live. I wish you all a very pleasant rest of your day, afternoon, morning, evening, night, or our, our friends, our friends in New Zealand where it's already tomorrow. And, and thank you, French Leo. No, I will not forget my jacket. It's cold outside. All right, thanks so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.